Welcome to Martini Time. It's been a beautiful day here in Blackstone, the center of the world, but then you too are at the center of the world. And I've been uh, talking about culture and uh, what's in the news, which is the Las Vegas shooting. And as all rituals, the pattern unfolds where you have the shock and awe, the hor like the horror, the horror. So when, let me get a drink first. And uh, an apocalypse, apocalypse now. Uh, Marlon Brando's character, Colonel Kurtz, kept saying the horror, the horror. You know, and you have to make friends with horror. And so, we're not in Vietnam anymore, and the horror is not in Vietnam. It's in America. <laughs> it came home. <laughs> so, and so, now the the. Uh, you know, the, the, the search for the motive is on. When you turn off the, the FBI is searching for the motive. What was Pollock's motive? Oh, if we could just find out the motive. Uh, we got to know the motive, you see. And, uh, and I got to thinking, you know, that this, the, the problem with, uh, and this is, uh, you know, the uh, ISIS terrorists or the Osama bin Laden terrorists, um, you know, well, they had motives in the sense that, uh, but but the American terrorists, um, you know, they've got everything. I mean, in the sense that uh, you know they they uh, particularly this one, uh, this one is you know you can't all they do they can't find any. He's not a neo-Nazi. They can't find anything. He's not a racist. Uh, they have I don't know. He may be, but they keep looking for some cause. And I, and I got thinking, you know, that we're really, the problem with uh, our inability to comprehend this terrorism, whether it's foreign-born terrorists or American-born terrorists, is that it, it, it's got no uh, cause in the sense that if you know the cause of something, you can remove the cause and remove the effect, which is the shooting. See, the effect is the shooting of some cause. Well, you know the guy shooter caught, but they're always dead. So, <laughs> unfortunately, the shooters always die. You know, so you can't put him under the lights and grill him. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Uh, and, if he's, and if it's in like any uh, British mystery, uh, when they catch the murderer, he always says, I had no choice. It was a compulsion. I just did it, you see. And that's the way a lot of, a lot of murders are. It's a compulsion. Um, what causes the compulsion? They don't know. So we need a bigger boat, you know, looking back to the movie Jaws. Jaws was a metaphor for the horror lurking within, the demon working within, the dark, the darkness in, the America, in America, the darkness within. So does America have a dark side? There's been studies of, of uh, Germany uh, before World War II, and I remember a study. I, I was on a, it was a documentary, but they went back through the German movies prior to World War II, and there was this darkness. This darkness was always this evil was always coming out and grabbing people. There was this fear of this darkness, you see, this shadow side. And we've got that in America. Just look at our horror. Look at all the, what, what is the big movie now that's popular? It? What are all these movies about? But the horror, the horror, you see. It's always lurking beneath the surface like Jaws. Ever the surface of America is so controlled. All the, you go to, all the, go to India and everything's like ants. But you go to America, everything moves, boop, 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 all organized, lights on, red, green, go, stop. Everything's controlled. You don't see any dead bodies lying around here. If anybody dies, the funeral directors come rushing in like first responders, pick up the body and take it away. Oh, and then we pump them up full of uh, formaldehyde or whatever and say, oh, they look better than they did when they were alive. Death didn't really happen at all, you see. We don't want death to happen in America. That's the whole, it seems to me, that's the whole thrust of our culture is to eliminate death and its subcategories of loss, grief, pain, 
The loss of comfort, that's a death. Oh my God, the internet's off <laughs> to this morning. So I lost my connection to the Facebook. Oh my God, <laughs> that's a death. You know, we don't, you know, so that shouldn't happen. In America, death should not happen. You know, discomfort should not happen. This is kind of like the mythology we've built up. And that's why 9-11 freaked us out, because death happened. America was, you can't invade America. America is invulnerable. The Germans and the Japs couldn't invade us, you know. Nobody could, Russians couldn't invade us. But then some guys with the box cutters invaded us. You know, well, that can't happen. That shouldn't be, how can this be happening? That's what death usually, that's what we usually say when death comes. How can this be happening? It's not supposed to happen. So if you look at American culture at large, you know, death is not supposed to happen. And so if, when death happens, all of our energy goes in to find the cause so we can remove it. And we're pretty good at it when it comes to machines. Airplanes, death used to happen all the time. They crash, air, big airliners crash. Two, three hundred people wiped out. When was the last time we had a big airplane crash? You know, if there's any mechanical failure, we put everything into it. A rocket goes up and crashes. What a cause? What was the cause? Find the cause, remove the cause. The rocket doesn't crash. It works great with machines. It works with computers. If a computer crashes, there's a cause, and you're going to go find it and remove the cause, and the computer won't crash. Good knows how. Look at the computers we've got now. And I remember when uh, I've kind of like grown up with uh, Apple and Macs and all that. And you can just look back a little ways. How they're just crashing all the time. Uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, blank, you know, just it was a mess. And now I don't, I've, my computer never crashes. Once in a while it may, it may lock, you know. But then I've got it overloaded with open, with open files and I restart the computer and it back again, fresh, you see. So this is great for uh, finding the cause for machines, computers. But you see, we're not machines. We're not computers. We're life. And culture is life. Culture is a living organism. Culture, American culture is a, is, a, is a collective mind. Remember an avatar? And the scientist in Avatar... Um, played by uh, Sigourney Weaver. She was kind of like scientifically looking at Pandora and she realized it was a big brain. She was so excited. My God, Pandora's a brain. And they're all, everybody's wired into it. Wow, you see. That was such a big, you know. And so, you know, Avatar was really saying, had a lot to say about... Uh, the two cultures of the sky people and the and the Pandora, because the sky people who are us, American culture, sees everything as things. We're still com common sense wise. We're still living in the Newtonian universe, and the universe in the Newtonian universe look like a a big uh, field of marbles. Everybody's a marble, just bumping into each other, and the biggest marble survives. And we're all obeying these laws of the machine. You see. And, uh, but, it, but the basic concept of common sense is we're all marbles, little individuals, you see, free will, running around, making mistakes, being good, being punished if we're bad, uh, being successful if we're good, you see, and running around bumping into each other. But it's all governed by laws and there's cause and effect. No marble moves unless another marble hits it. So in this mechanistic view, cause and effect operates the whole system, you see. So, if there is a, ter a mass shooter, some human being <coughs> does this unspeakable act of shooting other people, what's the cause? we got to get the cause so we can eliminate it, and it won't happen again. And we can remove that. Go, I fix that, you see. The car runs perfectly now. I got rid of that mistake got rid of that, that uh, cause. I found out what caused it, took it out. Now it's great, you see. So that's what we want. You know, these uh, terrorist attacks that are, are, are ritual, come in ritual with them, rhythm now, 
but every month we're going to get one and uh, seems like the value, the body count seems to go up now so that, uh, wow, this was the biggest one yet. 58 body count, wow. You know, that was bigger than the previous one. It's kind of like we measure things quantitatively, see? Uh, movies are measured by how much money it makes. Vietnam, the winning in Vietnam, was measured by how many bodies we could count. That's quantitative. It's thinking in terms of things. How many marbles you got in your bag? Well, I got 100 marbles. Well, I only got 50. So your value, you have more value than I have, you see. So everything's quantitative. And if we just think like that, if you think like that, you can't, you can't solve the problems because the problems are not mechanistic and when it comes to life. Life isn't a machine. So we're really pretty ignorant when it comes to understanding not only the life of America, but our own life, you see, because each of us is a mini America. You've got America is a collective, a big brain, and each one of us is a, is a mind, and that is a little brain in the big brain. Little mind, big mind. And we're all interacting with it and creating it. So we're all creating the mass shooter. The mass shooter is not something, some isolated, uh, the mass shooter is not some isolated anomaly. And that's what's freaking everybody out because it keeps happening. When something keeps repeating, you have a ritual or you have a pattern. Ooh, you see. And if you have a pattern, then there is no cause to each one of the events in the pattern. Um, in other words, so I was on the internet today and so, well, the cause was that the guy was evil. Okay. Well, granted, he was evil, but that is not the cause. That's like, then, because then you put up a stop sign and say, well, there's no, no, you can't look any farther because we found out what the cause is. He's evil. Well, that's like saying, okay, well, a cancer cell is evil. So there's no sense and no reason to look for the cure of cancer because it was caused by an evil cell. Stop sign. Well, we don't do that, of course. So if the mass shooter is a cancer, you see, there's no cause to the individual mass shooter, although there is. You could say the that Pollock did it, you see. He, he did that, right? But he is a symptom of a cause that's not seen, of a pattern. What's the cause of the pattern, you see? Well, the pattern is a pattern in American culture. American culture as a brain, as a, as a collective mind, has a thought pattern. And it repeats itself, you see. Because look at your own mind, your own brain. You have thought patterns. You get obsessed with something. Oh, I, I can't, and you can't get it out of your mind. Got, you're obsessed with something. I need to do this. I shouldn't do that. Don't think about a monkey. Well, I can't stop thinking about a monkey. You see. So we all know what that means. It's, it's ritual thinking. It's obsession. Can't get that idea out of my mind. This guilt, the shame, whatever it is. If it keeps reappear, reappearing in the mind, it's, it's a pattern. It's ritual thinking. And you can't get rid of it, you see, because the mind can't get rid of itself. <laughs> So culture can't get rid of itself. So it's kind of like we've reached a place in our American culture where uh, mayhem is happening and we can't find the cause or control it. And that creates anxiety. That creates terror, you see. Because it can strike any time. You don't know what the cause is. Particularly when the shooter is just your, your guy next door. They, well, they always say, well, he's just an like, average guy. When they did the Nuremberg trials of the Nazis, they were all average guys. They all had families, pets, loved their children. Mundane, average-looking people. Grocery clerks, accountants, you see. And yet they murdered millions of people. 
the banal it's called the banality of evil, you see. So it's easy to understand this looking at a ex culture. So German culture has been analyzed and studied, you see, because how did this phenomena rise up? How did this Hitler rise up, you see, in the most civilized and intellectual nation, culture in the, in the West, you see? How did, they be, how did the beast rise up? You see, so, so there's a lot. It's easy to study another culture. But when it comes to our own culture, it's not so easy because we're in the fish bowl. The fish can't understand the bowl it's in. And American culture is a bowl, a fish bowl, a culture, a mind, a collective mind. And I was talking about this this morning, that a good analogy is the Internet. The Internet is a big brain. It's got all the knowledge of humanity in there. Do you realize that? The Internet has got all of the knowledge accumulated by humanity. That's an amazing thing. How do you access that? Get one of these, you see. It's a little mini computer, a mini brain. You got the big brain, you got the mini brain. They interact. You can't get to the big brain unless you got this, you see. If you got this, you can get access to the big brain. And you not only do you get access to the information, positive and negative, but you get to interact with it and create it. So this is an interactive brain. And that's a great analogy for our culture. We interact with, we are creators and the created of the culture we live in. So all of us, you see, are participating in the mass shooting. If we get into a opinion war, a judgment war on Facebook, well, just think what would happen if Facebook had guns. <laughs> You see? If Facebook had guns, there'd be a lot of shootings on Facebook. You know, all we can do now is the ultimate to defriend them, exile, excommunicate. Shame, you're out, you're not my friend anymore. That's that's the most power we have, you see. But just imagine if we had guns. <laughs> you see what I mean? Why every little opinion, yeah, you, know, you know, somebody calls you uh even today, as you know, a friend of mine says, you're an idiot. <laughs> you liberal idiot, you know, or whatever. I mean, them's fighting words, you know. Let's have a duel. We're going to have a shoot each other. That's the way it used to be settled back with Alexander Hamilton. And, you know, you, you, you insult, you, you d demean my honor. I'm going to kill you. Well, but we'll have a legal duel, you see. Dueling used to be an honor thing, you know. Only the aristocrats duel, the poor people didn't duel. Honor, you see. So this whole, you know, idea of guns and, and uh, conflict and all, it's all everywhere. It's called judgment. It's called partition. It's called division. It's called uh, a people turning against themselves. <clears throat> a people turning back upon themselves in frustration and anger, you know. And so there's a psychological level to this that we're not calculating in, and, and we really have to turn to the, uh, uh, well, I don't know who to turn to, you know, uh, because we need a bigger boat. Um, you can't judge, the, the culture is kind of like a, the Titanic. You can't just make it turn like that, like a motorboat. You know, we're all contributing to, we're all participating, we're all on board of the American Titanic. We're all on board this big cruise ship. And we have entertainment, and we have the movies, and we have the, uh, the opium din, and we've got rooms on the cruise ship for all of our little needs, you see. The escape needs, we've got the navigating room, we're going to, with the political room where we're going to navigate the culture going to turn the culture this way and the other captain, the executive boss, no, we're going to turn it that way and we have an election on the cruise ship to see which way the, nav the captain is going to, who the new captain is going to be and who's going to direct the cruise ship you see, and we have this and it goes, and the cruise ship is kind of like going like this, you know, we get elect one captain and it goes this way, we elect another goes that way, and it's kind of like going that way you see, in the meantime half the crew is drugged or watching movies and the other, and the other crew is uh, setting bombs and trying to sink it, 
<laughs> you see, and we're all, it's all the American culture. And now we've got shooters on the culture. We've got shooters on the ship, and we don't know who the next shooter's going to be. Is it you? Is it you? You see? If they're Muslim, well then with, oh, there's a Muslim on the ship, he might be a shooter, get him off, you see. Yeah, but these American terrorists, these American shooters, well, they look just like everybody else. They look like the clerk. They look like the retired guy down the street. Can't tell, you see. So we have to, you know, there is no answer in the sense that you can't just change the cruise ship like that. But we do have to begin to see that each of us is responsible for the ship. And so, if we want to stop the mass shooters, we have to stop our own shooting. I have to stop shooting my own neighbor on Facebook. I have to see where I'm shooting my kids and my wife and my husband. I have to see where I'm judging them. I have to see where I'm refusing to listen to them. I have to see where I'm participating in the American culture of violence. I have to see where I'm doing my part to create this field of violence. Because when the American culture is a field of violence and frustration and anger and outrage, you see, there are always going to be individuals who act out the cultural violence. And they just spontaneously act it out. They don't know why they're doing it. It's a compulsion. So the conditions are creating the compulsions of these people that act out the violence of the overall culture. So you can, they're, they're endless because they keep erupting because the overall violence of America and its dark side, its unconscious side, is creating lightning strikes like a thundercloud creates energy until it's saturated and it has to hit a tree in order to release itself. So the American culture is like a thunderstorm full of energy and then when it gets saturated and boiling up, some guy's walking around and he gets zapped and he's the next one to explode and release the tension, you see. And then everybody comes running, oh my God, I love you, and compassion, and grief, and sorrow, and sacred grounds, and flowers, and vowing never to do it again, you see. And then that goes away, and then builds up, and zap, there's another one. So anyway, thanks for dropping in.